Let's get some hands together, gang, for Gideon AI. In summary, casting most spells will interrupt your melee attacks, but when you cast an instant ability, there is no cast time. So if your weapon is 1.5 speed or faster, then you get a free melee attack before your next spell cast. This usually doesn't deal a ton of damage, but against low armor enemies such as casters, or for causing extra spell pushback, again against enemy casters, this tactic will give you a valuable edge in combat. It may also become the basis for some very interesting new builds and fighting techniques. Now, Venruki applied this melee tactic as a mage to great use in the epic Horde dueling tournament a couple weeks back, and I highly recommend watching his highlights video, linked in the description. But let's take a closer look at how and when he applied his melee skills as a mage. I think it's smart. I don't have an ice block, but maybe I can rush him down. I might be able to just kill him, to be honest with you. Like, I straight up might be able to just rush him down. I think I should honestly just, like I said, I think I just, if the strat is rush him down. As you can see, this aggressive mage strategy revolves around spamming Arcane Explosion, Fire Blast, Frost Nova, and Cone of Cold as rapidly as possible. As a level 30 Frost Mage, this deals the most amount of damage in the shortest amount of time. He also blunk into melee range of his opponent so that he could successfully land his spells because most of these spells are very close range. However, being in such close range, he was able to land several melee hits, adding up to around 130 total physical damage for free and over the span of only a few seconds. The weapon he was using at the time was the Swine Tusk Shank, which is exactly 1.5 weapon speed and therefore he can just barely squeeze in a swing before he gets to cast another spell. So how about other classes besides mage? Well, Soda Poppin used this technique a little bit when he was spamming Moonfire to finish off an enemy clothy, and Holy Priests have access to Holy Nova, which is also a spammable instant cast damaging ability that pairs well with a fast melee weapon for some bonus damage. And both priests and druids might find themselves spamming Renew or Rejuvenation or other instants in large raids. But this free melee attack works anytime you cast any instant spell at all, so I think it's relevant for all casters if you're trying to make the absolute most of your combat situations, and if you just so happen to be in melee range. Now, about the weapon itself, there remains a few questions. First and foremost is optimization. 1.5 speed is technically the best, because any faster weapon speed is simply wasted stats. You can't attack any faster, because your instant spellcasts will reset your melee timer anyway, besides a few outliers. Faster weapons also usually have lower damage per hit, which usually lowers the damage that you're doing. Although, I personally wouldn't worry too much about this point, because the difference between 1.5 speed weps and the faster ones are only slight. Secondly, what about weapons that are slower than 1.5 speed? What if you're equipped with a 1.6 speed weapon, or a 1.7 speed weapon, or one slower than that? Would you ever intentionally hold off on spellcasting for a tenth of a second just to get a melee swing in? To give a brief answer, it depends. For example, if you're fighting against enemy mobs in PvE that have high armor values, and your melee attacks are barely tickling them anyway, then you probably don't want to do it. Just keep in mind that while a 1.5 speed attack is free, a 1.6 speed attack is not, and a 1.7 speed attack is twice as slow in comparison to a 1.6 speed attack. It's all about the frame of reference. While we're on the topic though, I should mention that all casters can increase their melee attack speed by 3% passively through various enchantments, and can go even further than that by using temporary consumables. If you can get enough melee attack speed bonuses, your 1.6 speed weapon will be able to strike at 1.5 speed or faster for maximum efficiency. But the slower your weapon, the more buffs you'll need to get the free hit. If your weapon is already 1.5 speed or faster, melee attack speed bonuses are a waste. Unless you can somehow get your attack speed to 0.75 speed, then you get two free attacks before your next spell cast. Also very important, is that the caster classes of this game have what is called a glancing blow penalty, meaning that there is a higher chance for a caster to do lower damage on a successful melee attack. There's a ton of big math behind this system, which I've already forgotten, 
but the gist of it is that mages, warlocks, and priests are going to do less damage overall with the same weapon doing the same attacks against the same enemy when compared to a paladin or a shaman or any other class who aren't considered to be casters, technically. I haven't figured out if the druid's so-called caster form or their moonkin form are also penalized, but I do know that cat form and bear form are not. One note on the more theoretical side of things is that there are three caster classes who are capable of going full-time into melee as parts of their own new builds and playstyles. These are the Balanced Druid, the Holy or Disciplined Priest, and the Arcane Mage. This is because they can spam Moonfire, Holy Nova, and Arcane Explosion with no cooldown, respectively, of course. These abilities are not great when spammed alone, but with melee, you can actually deal an impressive amount of damage. I know that I just said that there are damage penalties for casters going into melee, but even a glancing blow will still enable you to trigger your fiery weapon enchantment, your shadow oil buff, your dragon breath chili, and if your melee weapon has a chance on hit like Halcor's Sunraiser, that'll trigger too. And the Blade of Eternal Darkness also looks pretty good when you're going with very fast spells. Now, the theoretical part is whether any of these abilities scale with your plus spell damage stat and what the exact chances are to get them to trigger. Confirmed information on these items is coming out slowly. Just going to briefly touch on each of these three. So, for the Boomkins, spamming Moonfire while meleeing, the preliminary math indicates competitive DPS with the standard ranged build. This is mostly because they can equip rogue leather gear to increase their hit chance and dagger skill. However, in addition to the above, we still don't know if the talents Improved Moonfire and Moon Fury will impact the base damage of Moonfire, or if it multiplies after damage bonuses are added, and whether Druids or Moonkins count as casters for the Glancing Blow penalty is as yet unknown, in addition to all the previous unknowns about spell damage scaling, all that stuff. Now, priests are awesome because they get to deal damage while healing and generate next to no threat for it through Holy Nova. Theoretically, a melee priest dealing 50% of the DPS of a regular DPS spec while healing 50% of a regular healing spec would be capable of replacing a regular DPS and a regular healer. The biggest questions are, well, the above spell damage scaling as well as mana expenditure and range. Holy Nova isn't a common spell in the Priest's Arsenal because it's very expensive and it's restricted in range. Not to mention, healing isn't just a matter of healing the most numbers, so measuring it via a spreadsheet simply isn't reliable. I'll be testing this one myself. And lastly, you've got the Arcane Mages with their Arcane Explosion. It looks like a lot of fun, but Mages are already so good at DPS, unlike, well, Boomkins or Priests, that I doubt that a melee mage would be that efficient. I haven't yet touched the math yet though, so there's always a possibility. Oh, and one last thing. I'm still trying to figure out how an undead melee shadow priest tank would handle things. Undead priests have access to a racial spell called Touch of Weakness, which deals damage upon taking melee damage and has no cooldown. So if you're always taking melee damage, then you can just spam this thing. It also has a 43% spell damage coefficient, which means it scales much better than Mind Flay and eventually eclipses Mind Flay in damage per second. And the Shadow Oil procs from meleeing should benefit from some of your Shadow Damage talents. Mind Blast also rocks for threat output. Touch of Weakness is already being spammed in PvP by some undead priests looking to deal more damage against Alliance melee specs, but it could also be very valuable for rushing high-level dungeons in tandem with Vampiric Embrace as a tank. Anyway, we'll see if the math works out, but that would just be an awesome and hilarious build. Has a nice ring to it, too. Undead melee shadow priest tank. Anyway. For now, that's all the relevant information I can think of. If you can think of some other alternate uses or things I missed, then please feel free to share. And remember, go crazy.